We greet everyone, the peace of the Lord, the ones who are with us, connected through Zoom. We're going to stand up. I'd like to invite Pastor Sabato to be here in front. The service for us, the church, is a very important service because it is an answer to many prayers. Prayers of parents, prayers of family members, prayers of teachers, Sunday school teachers, all of us as Church of the Lord. And today we're going to be making the promotion of a couple of adolescents to the youth group. It is an important phase in their lives. Because until now, they have been led to the services. I'm not saying they've been forced. But in a, and that's right. You have to bring them. The parent have to bring the child, instruct them uh, on the path of the Lord. But now, from this point forward, it is their responsibility. They're now youth. They now own their own nose. No, stop daddy, stop mommy. They don't want to listen to anyone. No advice is worth anything. They already know everything. But it is in this moment that our children, that they have been prepared to choose to be in the presence of the Lord while the world is out there preparing the, the youth to accept all the pleasures, pleasures of this life on the path of the Lord they are being prepared to accept what are the good advices of the Lord the blessings of the Lord and they those advices they enrich us the blessing of the Lord enrich us do not bring pain so we are going to tonight Call to the front our sister Isadora Nascimento Medeiros. She will always be a child. Luisa Simão. Amen. Your daughter, you can come to the corner here. We need to have social distancing, right? <laughs> also, our sister Luisa Costa Coelho. And also Lauren Costa Coelho. Help Lauren. Uh, she she doesn't want to go. But that's all right. She's she's the boss here. And Nicholas. Nicholas Mello. And Gustavo Mello. Gustavo Silva, I'm sorry. Oh, Gustavo, he's in another city, but he's still participating with us here, with the youth, participating in the service and helping on the Sunday schools. He never misses any Sunday school, and he always participates. The photo of Nicholas and Gustavo, it's a technical failure. Leave, leave the girls, that's all right. No, man, don't, don't want to show up like this. Man is another story. Are you ready? It's a new phase. New phase. You always wanted to come to this moment, right? But now, look. The voice of the mommy and the voice of the daddy should always have a place in your heart. Firstly, the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Lord. Any question you might have, here it is. This is the manual of the victory of the Christian. The manual of the victory of the servant is here, the word. You want to get an, a good advice, want to have victory in your sentimental life, in your academic life. You want to be victorious. You want to win. Here it is, the word of God. The word of God is everything. The word is everything for us. Amen. So now let's pray for you. Gustavo is not participating. 
Amen. Let's pray, my friend. Glory to Jesus. Let's close our eyes. Seeking a blessing from the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. my child you are before God in a position that pleases the Lord in my eternity I'm giving to you great victories and the ability to testify of the power of my power. I'm going to use your lives and the ones that are going to be in contact with this world. I'm going to give you a word of my salvation so that you can benefit of my power Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you to your servants. We pray to you. We're thankful to, for everything. In the holy name of Jesus. You can stand up. I'm going to have a word of glorification to the Lord from the part of the church. Lord, I want to praise your name. What thankful Lord for the care of our God towards our adolescents. Lord, we glorify you because we know that your hands will continue to be upon the life of each one of them. We know, Lord, that they are under your promises and your project. We praise you for the care of our God, because none of them have been lost. All of them are here to honor your name. And we praise you, Lord, for this new phase in their, the life of each one of them. And we still ask, Lord, that you continue always beside them, not allowing anything to push them away from your path, Lord. Lord, so they, we pray that they may have great experiences in your presence, presence that will be a uh, landmark in their lives. We pray to you in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus. Is there a vision? I saw that each one of the sisters here, Nicholas and Gustavo, they all had received a garment. Uh, a long time ago, their garment was white, and now they have the same garment they received. Each one was wearing their own. But I noticed that at the, m the moment that we were praying with laying of hands, uh, a dew came upon them, but the dew was not water, it was uh, gold powder. And this gold powder would come down and go onto their clothing. And I understood in the vision that this powder was to protect those garments throughout their walk, spiritual walk. This gift speaks of the protection of God upon your lives. This garment. They are the wedding garments that we receive when we accept Jesus as our Savior. They are garments, spiritual garments. So, for us to keep our garments always acceptab acceptable to the Lord, you need to do the maintenance in prayer and seeking the Lord and reading the Word. And when you do this, the power of God will be poured out upon you. The power to testify, the power to preach, the power to be victorious and to say no to the things that are not good say no to the things of the world. So the Lord is giving you the means to be able to face what is waiting for you out, out there. Amen? So go with this strength. can go that the Lord is with you. Amen? Can you sit down in the front here? All the three there. And Nicholas, can you sit down there? So we're going to take advantage of the service today.
So then the ushers and deacons can stand up. Uh, is the praise for afterwards? Yeah, the praise is for afterwards. Amen. So we'll remain standing. I'm going to be standing for half an hour. So for me, it's not a problem. Not a problem for you to stay one minute standing. Where is there going to be the message today? Answer me. John what? John 4. It's not my, it's, it's not my fault. John 4, verse 1. One onwards. Is it possible there is more message? Is there more message in this word here? Is experience on this woman? John 4, 1 said the following. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more than disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Now Joseph, well, well, Joseph's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. Amen. The brethren may be seated. Who amongst you have already read chapter 4 of John? The entire chapter. Wow. Three people only. <laughs> oh, okay. More people. Amen. People here, at least they, you don't lie. It's a good sign. <laughs> the problem is that you raise both your hands, but you don't even know where John, the book of John is in the Bible. Okay. Read. It is a, a chapter. It's very important for the church. We're going to read here. We're going to see the entire project of salvation of man. Everything that God has prepared for the church, for the world. To all of us who have accepted Jesus as our Savior one day. If we analyze here, verse by verse, each verse here gives at least 10 minutes of message so that you can have an idea of the riches that this chapter is. How the Lord left something like that for us. We begin reading here on verse 1 that Jesus understood that the Pharisees had heard about Jesus. So, now, so then we need to go back on chapter 3. At the end of chapter 3, they're going to see that John the Baptist the last of the prophets, he was baptizing the people. So now Jesus begins his ministry. And Jesus began his ministry. He called a couple of disciples and began to preach, doing what he was sent by God to do. And the disciples of John, they were worried. And the Pharisees were also worried. Why is that? Because Jesus, whatever he passed by, people followed Jesus. And here, on chapter 3, it shows that Jesus, that this Jesus' disciples, not, not him, not he, Jesus, but his disciples, they were already baptizing more people than John the, than John the Baptist. And the Pharisees heard about it. And the Pharisees, they were the doctors of the law. They were, they were responsible for, for the Le Levitic service. The, so that they were men that were concerned and they had the mission of taking care of the spiritual order of Israel. So they were worried. If John the Baptist baptized many people, now this Jesus, this no, new one, is baptizing even more people. We need to see what is happening. They were worried about it and when Jesus and it, it is interesting that John the Baptist when he was questioned by this event 
he, what does he answer? What is important is that he grows and that I diminish. Chapter 3, verse 3 says the following. It's necessary that he grows and that I uh, diminish. My brethren, this verse will give to us here all the understanding about this message on chapter 4 is the opening so that we can enter on chapter 4. And why is that? Because when man has this understanding, he takes away from his heart what is human, what is a material understanding, and he begins to act in the spiritual sense. What does he do? He begins to grow smaller. And Jesus begins to grow in his life. In, so, in other words, if, 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 it, if it, everything is going well in the life of the Christian, something is wrong is happening. Man, the flesh, my ego, my old man, my own reason, they have to vanish. They have to disappear. Why is that? Because the more I disappear, the more you disappear, more what who is going to appear the glory of God in your life that was the vision that the pastor had with the youth the power of God we have to be victorious in it John the Baptist understood it clearly what Jesus came here to do and it is important that he grows and that I diminish he was not concerned about titles or promotions no he was not worried about it he wanted to do the project of God uh, but the Pharisees they were concerned you know why because when the work of God it stands out, when the servants of God they are willing to do the work of the Lord, the enemy always rise up, rises up. The opposition always rises up. That's what I said here. You are having a life that is easy. Pray to the Lord. Put your knee on the dust. Put your mouth on the dust and the knee on the ground. You know why? Because if the enemy of our souls, like we said here, the enemy, he wants to steal what the church has that is special. And who is the special person here? Who is the special person here on this earth? It's the church. It's you. It is us. We are part of the body of Christ. So, my brethren, John the Baptist understood it clearly. So now Jesus, when he became aware that the Pharisees were worried about it, Jesus, he resolved, he decides to leave Judea and go to, and to, go to Galilee. The Lord Jesus, he had a project to fulfill. His project was not a personal project. Jesus under, understood it clearly. The project of Jesus was not his own project, human project. It was the project of the Father. Jesus was fulfilling the agenda of the Father. Jesus knew that if, that if he needed to stay here and the Pharisees would go out to argue with him, Jesus knew that all the project in the life of Jesus here on earth would not come to the end would not be fulfilled. So that's why Jesus, he ran away, but he didn't run away with fear. He ran away because it was not the right time for Jesus to go through what he was going to go through, to be imprisoned, to be judged, condemned. It was not the moment yet. Maybe for him as a man, Jesus, Jesus as a man, it would have been easy, even easier it would have been easy, even better. Well, I came here to die, so let's do this right away. The Pharisees are already worried. Let them imprison me. I'm going to go to the cross. He already knew what was going to happen. He, the revelation of God was already upon Jesus. But he goes away. Why did the Bible say Jesus leave Judea and went once again to Galilee? He was not running away, afraid of facing the Pharisees or prison. No. It was because not was not the right time. It was not on God's time, and God's clock, 
what was supposed to happen, what needed to happen a while later. So then he goes to Samaria, he goes to Galilee, but it was necessary to go s through Samaria. So Kendra, can you show the map? Let's go. You see, Jesus was here, here in Jerusalem. He was in Judea, right? So here, from Jerusalem, just so the brethren can have an idea, where he went was 50 kilometers in a straight line. But he, since he went through here, through the tracks, it was about 70 kilometers on foot. But it says the following, it was necessary to go through Samaria. If we look, according to human reason, inside of human understanding, it was not necessary to go through Samaria. Jesus did not need to go, he was not supposed to go through Samaria. You know why? Because there was a disagreement between the Samaritans and the Jews. He had many options, either through the sea, or, or through the Jordan River. He would go cross the Jordan River here, and he would go here, right here, until he came to Galilee. This is the Sea of Galilee. Here is Jordan River here. He is point here, goes all the way to the Dead Sea. This is the Dead Sea. This is the Jordan River. You know what Jordan River is? Means, what is the meaning of the word the name Jordan River. Jordan River is in our tongue, Portuguese, the one that goes down. So Jesus is the one that goes down. He comes down here, crossing here, and he gets to to that seat. Who who is that spiritually? This man. Isn't it true? We are all in Adam, we lost our eternity and began to live away from God. But Jesus comes, he's the one who comes down. He comes from the top. We spoke here last week, or the week, the previous week. He comes down, he takes on the role of man. He goes through all of this. He comes down from heaven. He comes to earth and faces everything in order to give life to a man who was con with the condemnation of death. But this is another aspect. So Jesus was here. He walked here. He did not need. He, If we analyze here the ra rabbinic law, the rabbis, they were the ones, the ones who also took care of everything. In no way it was forbidden for them to enter into the territory of the Samaritans. If they were needed to enter or go through here, as soon as they l left this territory, they would have to clean them up, complete themselves up completely, remove the dust. They could not enter. There was no fellowship, there was no friendship, there was no harmony between those two regions. And this took place about 2,700 years earlier. It was already spoken here, Pastor Sabato explained, and Fabio explained yesterday, when 700 years before Christ, in the kingdom of the north, there was a division between the kingdom of the north and ten tribes, and two tribes on the south. The kings of the kingdom of the north, all of them, there were men that did not do the will of the Lord. And the judgment of God upon them, all the kings that took on, they made a terrible, they, their kingdom was terrible. They did not keep uh, 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 sanctity. They, did, they were not worried about keeping the Sabbath. And the Lord, they didn't know, didn't they didn't take care of the Levite, and the judgment of God was with, with the permission of God. The Assyrians 
the Arsenian Empire, they invaded Israel, besides killing lots of people, they took all the ones who had better means, they, they took them all imprisoned. Only the poor people remained. And after many years, it was allowed that a few that were in the Babylon to come back and to live once again in this region here. And as time passed by, there was uh, mixed the inhabitants that remained. They began to marry the, those people that were allowed to inhabit here once again. And with this marriage, with this mix of races throughout years, and then it was created the Samaritans, the region of Samaria. So you understand, has become clear. After many years, 700 years before Jesus came to the world, it was this group of Samar this population of Samaritans grew up. And they believed in the same God, but they did not accept the books of the Old Testament. They believed the five first books, but they did not accept the other books. They didn't believe in all the other books. So as time passed by, there was this disagreement between them. They did not communicate with one another. There is no such a thing as visiting and traveling. So it was a terrible thing. So Jesus did not need to go through Samaria. The disciples themselves, surely they may have told Jesus, Jesus, I don't know if you know that, but this route that you chose, going straight, it's going to be bad because people are already speaking bad about us because we are baptizing. When they find out that you are going through Samaria, it's going to be even worse. So Jesus did not need to go through Samaria, but he had a meeting with a woman. It was scheduled for Jesus a meeting with this woman, this Samaritan woman that we all have been studying about her. So let's go quickly here. So then Jesus goes there to Samaria. He asks the disciples that they should go to buy food because they spend a lot of time on food, walking. And so then they get to the well of Jacob around noon, thirsty, hungry. So then he allowed the disciples to go to the city called Siken, Sikar, which is nearby here, in order to go and buy food. See what Jesus, how Jesus begins to uh, teach the doctrine to his disciples. My brethren, Jesus came to the world to take away, to break any type of uh, preconception. He is not the only one who came here to do it, but he came to teach us this. So he said, go out there and buy food because we need to eat. And disciples, they had to go. Not to understand also that there is not for Jesus doesn't, for God does not choose a person over the other. Oh, uh, Brazil is better than America and the American is better than the Brazilian. That doesn't exist for God. Maybe in our human understanding, in our rationalization, we may think this, but for God, this doesn't exist. And Jesus is here. In this chapter, he, he comes to show to us exactly this. So we need to remove this from our mind, uh, that whatever is human, after we accept that Jesus, what is human, needs to be left behind. Because when we begin to enter into God's time, we will understand completely God's project. And this is clear here. In the moment in which Jesus speaks with that woman, in the moment in which Jesus begins the dialogue with this woman. Because Jesus here, look, when she arrived, Jesus was already there. And she comes now around noon, like Fabio said before, why she came at noon. Imagine this woman. She was already despised by the Jews, by all the ones who were around her region, and even by the Samaritans. Imagine something like that. The fact that she went there at noon shows this. Because she, she should have gone earlier in the day. 
when the other women were also there picking up water. When she goes in this period there, they would normally go either in the morning or at the end of the day. But she went at noon where there was no other woman present, where there was no other Samaritan present. Why is that? Because she already felt despised by her own people. What a difficult situation. But Jesus knows, goes and meets exactly with her, breaking any preconception, any barrier, any racial barrier, any barrier of hatred, barrier of rejection, barrier of failure. Imagine this woman. Why would she go at noon? Surely, she may have heard people saying silly things to her. Hey, look who is coming. Yeah, that woman that had a husband now left her first husband. Look at her. She already left two husbands. And the other day, oh, the third husband. No, can you imagine? Three husbands, no fourth marriage husband. Imagine what this woman have heard to the point that she isolated herself. And then five, five husbands, fifth husband, imagine. What a difficult situation. What is she doing here? Now, the sixth, six times, can you believe that? Six times she got married and got divorced. Six times. This woman is not supposed to do something like that. And now Jesus goes and comes and had a, has a conversation with her. It was forbidden. The rab rabbis were, did not have conversation with women like this an open, open sky. It was not allowed for them to do this. They could not have any contact. Now Jesus comes and goes to her. You have to de uh, unblock it. You know my password, David. People are talking too much. <laughs> so just uh, wait a second. Wait a second. I was even off. Let me get into the Zoom event. Here it is. You need, you need to go to the people there. Who is, is talking? Here it is. You want to take it? Jesus comes to this woman. And he, in a very, very polite way, imagine. He comes and says, give me something to drink. He could have said, hey, I'm a man, I'm thirsty, I'm tired, give me something to drink, because I can't take it anymore. No, but he went, very patient, He's please, he didn't say, he just said, give me something to drink. And she began to show what she was carrying with her, the bitterness, she, has, she showed to Jesus what she, her, her life, how can you, being a Jew, ask me something to drink because I'm a Samaritan woman? Don't you know the law? My read, Jesus went there with all, all the care and attention. He began to show to her that she needed to let go of all the suffering that she had acquired throughout her life. And Jesus began to show to her that she needed to let go of all the dis despise that she was the target of, that was placed upon her. And she needed, she needed to let go everything that was physical, everything that was human, that was humanly rational, so that she could understand who Jesus was. And when she began to see this, when she began to understand who Jesus was, Jesus was not there to take advantage of her. Jesus was not there to abuse her. He was, Jesus was not there to, to show to her, once again, the wound, the pain that she was feeling. So now, at the end of the conversation, Jesus begins to tell her. He begins to enter now in the service of God. And this is a very important moment. Because on the service of God, uh, uh, for God, Jesus began to tell her something that she had not understood yet. Jesus speaks about the water of life. He said that He it was the water of life. 
He said that if she continued in the same way she was, she was going to continue suffering the rest of her life. So now that's the message for the youth. The world is out there. War for to you. Many things. Many things. And you may or may not accept this. You understand? You can. But in the same way that a woman, her job was to pick up water and she was going to do this until the day she died because the well was deep. She said to Jesus, the well was deep, there was a lot of water, there was abundance of water. And men always have the need for water. So the work that she had, the water to to pick up the water for, the, for her family was never going to be over. She was going to live this life doing this. But Jesus offered to her a water that will quench the thirst of her soul. She with a human understanding and Jesus is speaking with her spiritually. Do you see the difference? So when you begin to understand the approach of God is spiritual, the benefit is spiritual, then you will understand that how God will feel fulfill all your needs. You you are not going to need to seek in the world for joy. You are not going to seek in the world something to fill the emptiness, emptiness that is in your heart because there are going to be moments like this. But when you begin to understand what you, you are living here since you are a child, since you were a child, that is something is that, that is eternal, that is, has worth, then you need to give worth to it. Then you understand that Jesus really loves your life. You are a target of God's love and God's mercy and God's grace. That's why you will see friends or youth, oh, they want a car, a new car, and tomorrow they want, and now and they want drugs, and tomorrow they have an addiction. You know why? Because that's the water the world offers. And that's the water they will always be running after. Because it never quenches the thirst of their heart. That's why needed, Jesus needed to break this human understanding in her, in her mind. This human rationalization. This world is worthless. There is no place for you in the world. So it's best that you accept and have this experience with Jesus. The Found that Jesus offers will jump to eternity. Once Jesus entered into a feast, he came and said, Whoever thirsts comes to me and drink. Nobody understood, everybody was happy drinking and, and Jesus comes at the end of the, the party and says, Who wants you are thirsty, come to me and drink. And why is that? Because Jesus was speaking in, in the spiritual sense. Jesus' words are an eternal sp speaking. Man speaks only for this life. That's why John the Baptist said, it's best that I diminish and Jesus grows in my life. So this experience of this woman may serve for us, for you who are starting in your life in a very important phase in your life, a decisive phase in your life. From this point forward, you need to start making choices. And Jesus is here to offer to you a water that will quench once, once and for all the thirst and the emptiness that is in the mind, that is in your heart. You just need to accept this. And Jesus will be available to you. And then Jesus speaks to her just to finish it off. And then she said, hey, wait a minute. You're saying that the well of Jacob, Father Jacob, you are more important than the well. So where am, am I supposed to praise the, the Lord? Here or there on the Mount Gerizim or the Mount of Jer Jerusalem? And Jesus says on verse 21 and forward, he says, The time is come and it's now that the true worshippers are going to praise the Father in, in spirit and in truth. Because the Father is looking for the ones now 24. God is spirit. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. You know why Jesus said, said that to her? What is to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth? What is the difference? 
This woman, she prays in spirit because she believed in God. God is spirit. And it's important that the ones who praise Him may worship in, in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. Jesus told that to her. They believed in God. They believed in the same God that the Jews believed. The same God. But they did not believe in the truth. They did not believe in whom? Who is the truth? Jesus. They did not believe in the word. They would cancel the Old Testament. They believed in God. But they did not believe in the word of God. So here is the teaching to all of us. The Lord is seeking worshipers that can adore Him in spirit and in truth. Everyone believes in God. If you ask anyone, they will say, Oh, yes, I believe in God. I know that God one day is going to give me a better car. I'm going to win in the lottery. Of course I believe in God. This is what, what is to adore in spirit. But it's not adoring in, in truth. Because the ones who adore Jesus, what does the word say? You know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The ones who adore in spirit and in truth, they were they are transformed. The Holy Spirit begins to take control of their lives because they know the word, they know what is eternal, they know the doctrine of the Father. They begin to live, living their lives under the command of the Holy Spirit. That's what I said from the beginning. The manual for our victory is right here. Anyone can believe in God, but what is important is, is that we open our hearts and we need to accept what is eternal, accept the word of the Father, because those are the ones that God is seeking, worshipers like you, worshipers like we are, because one day, we accepted Jesus as our Savior. And we live according to the word of the Father. Amen. So that woman, she went, she was evangelized by Jesus. And then the disciples came back. She was already completely evangelized. She had understood the doctrine. And she even began to preach. She, be, she became a preacher. She became a disciple of Jesus. And her understanding about her, what she was or her human understanding about her own people the fleshly understand everything fell to the ground and she began to understand what is to praise uh, adore, worship the Father in spirit and in truth because she uh, was became aware of the truth and she changed the way that she lived you know why? because when man meets with Jesus when man has a meeting with Jesus this meeting promotes what? A transformation, a true transformation. Not a transformation that is fleeting, only for this moment. No. A meeting with Jesus generates a transformation, a true transformation. The same transformation that Zacchaeus had. The same transformation that once we had. And the Lord has given to us this blessing of continuing on the path of salvation. Who is Jesus? Amen. May the Lord bless us. Let's hear a song.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's stand up, my brethren. And that's one of the brethren who are watching through Zoom to glorify the Lord. Praise your name. Glorify the Lord. Because tonight has spoken to our hearts. Praise the Lord for the life of your servants whom you have preserved in this walk. Your children have heard a call from the Lord. Glorify the Lord for your church, for the people of the Lord that have gathered in your presence. We praise the Lord for the great deeds of the Lord in our lives. Lord God, for the great deliverances. We praise you, Lord, for our salvation. We glorify you, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord was giving gifts to the service. He was showing a woman that was going away. Let me read the entire vision, then you will understand it spiritually. The Lord was showing a woman that was going away from, from a point that was safe. And the night would come, and even her, even it being dark, she was able to see where she came from. And the Lord tonight is telling her, to go back today still, right now. Because if she continues, she won't be able to see the place where she came from. And people, someone that for sure is walking in the wrong direction to God's project. Somebody that is abandoning the Lord. She's still missing, she still sees. She can see, she'll see a light, she misses, the Holy Spirit is touching her heart, but she, if she continues on this path, distancing from the Lord, the enemy will will take her life, her soul away, because the enemy he plays dirty. Don't think that the enemy plays fair. When the enemy sees that their person is farther than the, the, from the Lord and closer to him, he doesn't waste any time. Look, tonight the Lord is giving you a warning. Go back to the path. Go back to Jesus. Let go of this life. And Jesus told this woman, I am the water. I am the one who is speaking with you. Jesus has a solution for everything. Let go of this life of illusion. doesn't matter what happened in the past. Oh, I'm bitter, I'm sad, I'm uh, because of this or because of that. Uh, this time of pandemic is horrible. And no, it's difficult. Worse is out there without Jesus. Here, at least, we are receiving the comfort from the Lord. We are receiving the direction from the Lord. We are listening to the voice of God, like when He spoke with the youth tonight. In the world, it's worse. You think that Lot, actually Job, Noah, Noah, that's Noah. <laughs> Remember, Noah was with his life there, and a bunch of animals imprisoned on those in this ark there. The thing that was easy there, the smell of those animals, having to live so many days there in prison without being able to look outside, you think it's hard. It is. Now go outside, jump on the water. Go out there. You think it's difficult, then go outside. Here in the ark, here in the Lord. We, we go through difficulties, but we continue. goes towards eternity because our victory, the Lord has already given us. Isn't it true? So, my brethren, that's what it is. Do not look to the difficulty. Don't look to men. Don't do like this woman thought, Oh, you, who are you? You don't you know that I'm a Samaritan. Why, why you are talking to me? No. Overcome this barrier, the barrier, difficulty of of the despise Jesus is love man is failure man fail but only look towards Jesus and tonight the Lord has already shown another vision there were two women that entered here tonight they are more or less in the same situation of the other one without life women in a even in a worse situation but the Lord is giving to these two women tonight a new opportunity to accept Jesus 
as their Savior. Salvation is dynamic. You accept it one day, but every day it needs to be renewed. It is a process. The act is just once, but the process is every day. The process of salvation is dynamic. It is you with the Holy Spirit and you fighting for a blessing, you praying. It's you fighting to overcome the world. So tonight, with these three women, the Lord is giving you a new chance. Take possession of this. There is a song uh, what the Lord was speaking with a son. We sing the song of Revelations. And the Lord is going to be hope on the life. We're going to sing before we finish a song because the Lord is going to bring a renewal. Have you already sang this one? Oh, that's the one we sang. Where was I? <laughs> okay, that's good. So you sang that. That's wonderful. Amen. So let's finish the service. My God, we glorify your name for the service, for this joy, Lord, of being able to see our children, our youth in our pres in your presence. As like many other youth are being devoured by the world, they are losing their lives out in the world. And how, as many families, families are seeing their children in defeat and failure, but we as a church, we can glorify your name because our children are being raised on the path of justice, path of righteousness. And we have this joy that takes a hold of our hearts. Receive our praise. Receive uh, the adoration of your people and give us a week of victories in your presence. It's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say that the wonderful gra grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, be proud upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. This week, we're going to have a couple of activities. I don't know if you the, the one received uh, the period of prayer throughout the week. The topics have already been shared. Choose your, your time and pray to the Lord. We have had moments where we needed to pray more than ever. We leave moments just before the tribulation. So we need to pray to the Lord so the Lord may give us grace and preserve us, preserve our health, family, preserve everything. So you have not already chosen your, your time. Choose and pray to the Lord. And Thursday night, Thursday night, we're going to have a special service of prayer. All the churches here in America and Canada, they're going to be all together in the same service. We're going to send the link to the brethren. And so get ready so that we can be together participating on the service of prayer to the Lord. Amen. And to all the peace of the Lord Jesus. The brethren from Zoom, if you want assistance, the deacons and ushers there, they will give the proper assistance to whoever needs. And here we're going to begin our period of assistance here. Peace of the Lord to everyone. <laughs>